welcome to Gail's Garden Herbs and More. We're going to be talking about garden preps, preparing this time of year, what can we do um, type of a thing. Uh, this is my greenhouse. If you have anywhere you could put a greenhouse, it would be a great thing. This is just a cheap one. Um, actually, it's held up really well. I think it's been, what, two summers we've had it. It had two holes there, but it would not have, other than I had this rack up by the side, and we had a really strong wind that blew it over, and these things up here went through it. So we taped it up, and I'm surprised it lasted all that hot summer, whereas some of this stuff here cracked. The sun just, even though it was inside, it was so hot this summer, it just fell to pieces, a lot of this this type of stuff. Um, but yeah, if there's any way you can have any type of greenhouse, that would be great. If you can't, just work with what you have. But let me, um, let me talk about something else here for a minute. In this day and age, and the way things are, you really need to start learning if you don't know. And we all can do it more, especially, I think we've been trained not to. But we need to use our in instincts, what you feel in your gut. Um, and if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you know that the Holy Spirit speaks in a still, small voice to you as well. And you need to listen to that, even on simple things like gardening what God leads you in. Um, let me tell you, I got out here, and this was just full of dead leaves, and I thought, that's so ugly, and I started cutting them all off. But as I did, I just, it was like, don't do this. Don't do this. And I stopped, but I'd already got most of the leaves off. I put them down here around this pepper plant to kind of keep it warm, the ground warm there. And my cat is wanting attention. But anyway... <laughs> And I was stood here and I looked at it and I thought, that's so stupid, Gail, cutting those leaves off. They were protecting the plant. Now, there is a time you'll cut them off. Later, when it warms up and the real cold weather has passed, cut off all those dead leaves. But not right now, not in the middle of January. Uh, sometimes I just get in a hurry and I do things without stopping and considering and thinking about it. The dead leaves are a protection. Nature has that thing's for a reason. This bloomed because it had dead leaves by it. I already picked some of them off, so I'm surprised it's still there, although we we're in a, back in a warm spell now. Um, let me show you. I even had little berries coming on around the dead leaves. And look back behind these dead leaves. Here's another blossom. But acorn. I find acorns everywhere from our oak trees. Um... Yeah, so listen to your gut. Listen to your instincts. Most important of all, listen to the Lord. He usually leads you in spiritual things, but I find He can lead you in every aspect of life. Okay, let's go on. We're going to talk some more about um, this time of year and garden prepping. Now is a good time if you need to do some repotting. This is my best at least last year, blueberry plant. But the pot I had it in was plastic, and it just split all the way down the side from that heat. Last summer was just devastating <laughs> to a lot of stuff. So my son helped, came over and helped me yesterday, and we got that. He repotted that in that planter there. So right now is a great time to repot when the plants are sleeping. Um... There's not any leaves on this one, but there's lots of little buds. I'm really, really excited about those those little buds. Um, yeah, so right now is a good time to do some repotting. It's a good time to do some. Now, we had some extra dirt. Let me show you something. It's a good time to refurbish dirt, too. We put some feeding, some stuff to feed in the dirt here. And then we had a little bit left over. I took some, some over. Let me show you what I did. Okay, the chickens had gotten this earlier, a couple months ago. And they had dug a big hole right here and dug out the plants that I did have. So I filled it all in with dirt and planted some carrots. Now, I don't think carrots... Ah, you still there? Okay. 
Okay, I don't know where that stopped at. My camera fell. Okay. Um, boy, that got me all off the train of thought and everything. <laughs> anyway, we planted carrots there. Um, let me put this tool back so nothing, even little birds, don't come over here and dig it all up. Ooh, I got some lettuce for another salad coming up there. My other, I picked all my other lettuce in the other areas. And I need to put the tool back over my broccoli. Hold on. Okay. I also got some of my containers and filled them with dirt. Now, I haven't planted these yet. I'm getting them ready. But um, I don't want to let the dirt just sit there and totally dry out before I plant. I'll be planting some cool weather stuff. I don't know. Haven't decided yet. Uh, the weather's so strange, I'm not sure what to do. But pretty soon, probably some things like beets, maybe cabbage or something. I don't know. I'll have to look through my seeds and see what all I have. But you can prepare the pots. You just keep it damp. There is soil microorganisms in there, especially this. I took it out of a pot. I know there's some in there. So you don't want it to all dry out and those microorganisms to dry. But it's damp. Um, and then, so I'll keep an eye on my dirt. But I'll have those all ready to plant. Okay, another thing, if you do have a greenhouse, now's a good time to check your soil. Make sure it's not too dry. You don't have to water much in the winter. Very, very little, little. At least I haven't found that I need to. But check your soil and stuff. You don't want it overly wet, but you don't want it super dry either. That's something, I mean, this is a busy time of year too. There is much that you can do to be prepping. Now, we talk, let me show you something else. A great many people that have gardens have chickens because they really add to it. Um, they're waiting to be fed. It's early. I'm going to have to feed them, and then I've got to go. Um, I have an errand I have to run. But um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go get my son. He's going to help me move all this stuff in the back so we can clean this all out, the manure, dig it into the dirt. Great time of year to be doing this stuff. You want to let your chicken manure set in the dirt for a while because it's a hot manure. But this is also something else. It's a good time of year to clean out the chicken pen, get all that nutritious manure out in the dirt. It's nutritious for the, for the dirt, not us. <laughs> and um, there is so much to do. Now we're going to be moving the chickens in here because my goats are over at my daughter's being bred by the bucks and stuff. And I probably, I may have some of the babies later in the year and I'll just move the chickens back up front then. But there's a lot of wild herbs and grass growing in there. The chickens will absolutely love it. And the pen back there is bigger. They'll have a lot more room. I have to lock them at night. In. Every night I have to go out there and lock them in because of coyotes and critters and stuff um, that can get in. And the horses have, as you can see by the fence, have really messed it up. Finally, got my son to come and put a um, strand of bob wire around the outside. And that has seemed to, knock on wood, keep them from totally tearing it down the rest of the way. But it's pretty bad. I hope I can keep my chickens in there. I'll have to clip one of their wings. Man, talk about technical difficulties. This is about the sixth or seventh time I've tried this. My phone has been crazy. But anyway, we took that chick manure, mixed it with dirt, put down here. We've got all this ground prepped and ready to go. Now I can do what I want here. It's ready. Uh, I can put some peas along the edge. Since my chickens are in the back, they won't be eating them from the other side of the fence. And just leave the rest for this summer. I'm not sure what I'm going to plant here, but... Um, come the summer but it's prepped and ready to go what else do we need to prep and can we prep this time of year you need to be thinking about where the sun is and the shade is in the summer now these trees here have all grown they were grown all over and over the few years that I've had this box here when I started out it was okay but now um, never was great but now it won't hard, you know, I have a real hard time. So uh, that kale took about eight or ten months to, to even, it came up about a half inch high and stayed that way most of the summer. There was just too much shade. I mean, it was just, it was crazy. Um, I talked, I think I talked about that in other videos. 
it's a good time you can cut branches that to trim back trees if they're diseased cut disease branches off even though this one still has its leaves many don't um, olive trees don't lose their leaves like um, your fruit trees and stuff like that one but um, yeah you need to think about that get some sun into the area if you can good time to cut when the trees are asleep and uh, and maybe not quite as vibrant so um, it doesn't really hurt them this time of year you don't want to do this in the middle of summer sometimes you have to uh, depending on the situation but this is a good time of year to do that kind of thing okay okay I had a big plant in here that was just overtaking the whole box and it wasn't a plant I used that much and I can actually plant quite a few things now because I dug that had my son dig it out for me and it is a pineapple sage and we just put it in the ground over here this is a good place for it it has beautiful red flowers in the fall which is very enjoyable but I don't really do a whole lot with it. You can make a tea with the leaves, pineapple sage. It smells good, but it's just not one of my favorites. And I need that box for planting. We need as much planting room as we can get. The price of food has gone crazy. We need to get food growing the best that we can. So rearrange things the best you can. Get where you have more area and better area to plant. These are from my grapevines. It's the time of year to trim back your grapevines. They like it. Um, and actually, you can take these pieces and grow from them. Now, this one I had planted over here. I dug through these rocks on my own, and I couldn't get very far, but I just put a little extra dirt down in there and stuck it in there. And this was only a couple weeks ago. Last year, when I tried to get some grapevines to grow roots it took forever weeks and weeks seemed like I don't know how long but this year within a couple weeks what happened was my son came over and I said oh you can dig a, a hole for me just dig a big hole over here and and I thought well I went ahead and pulled it up thinking it wouldn't have roots yet and it did have roots I'm so excited but I went ahead and put it in that hole and I said well go ahead and redig. I didn't get very very far and I'll put another piece of one of my grapevines in there. So he went ahead and dug that out real quick. I really had him over doing something else today, but he went ahead and dug these holes for me. And it's a good time of year to do this kind of thing. And what I'm thinking, and see, you have to think ahead. Last year, my um, blueberries are over there now. I hadn't moved them all over there. I had to re, you know, redo the bucket. I think I told you about that. I've redone this video in parts and pieces so many times. Um, but it's so hot right in this area, blazing hot. And I lost a couple of my blueberries and had to go buy some more. So I'm thinking if I can get the grapevines to grow along here, it will shade it some from that intense afternoon heat. Be thinking about these kind of things, how to work things around so that... Um, your plants will be safer, grow better, and you'll get more uh, product from them. I knew my dirt was getting low, but I went ahead and got everything out of here. Uh, one of my flower plants was just taking over, and I really I can't eat it, and I need areas to eat. But my problem is I've got to get some more dirt, dirt and it's really expensive in bags. So. I know someone down the road, or we used to, they've moved, but I know some of the other people a little bit. I don't know if I can get anyone to get some manure or not. Not sure how I'm going to get some extra dirt to refill this in. It goes down. It really, dirt goes down. Um, there's the plant over there. It's a, I think it's a type of salvia, Victorian, Victoria, or something has beautiful blue spires. It draws in a lot. I don't want to just throw it. It draws in a lot of pollinators in the summer. So I will be clearing this out a little. I've got some blossoms on these peas, so I may leave those for a while. But with this cage and everything, I do want to prep it a little bit um, before summer because I want to put another tomato vine. I need to dig that dirt around and, and add some nutrients to it. I just didn't get anything last summer, so we'll see. But it was really, really hot, and that might have been the problem. But be thinking about all these kind of things. Now, in here is my winter, some of my winter crops. 
and um, I found a garlic totally dug out that I planted a couple weeks back and I don't know what happened. A squirrel got in there, a cat got in there, a rat, I don't know. I know the birds, the little tiny birds that come in here and eat the leaves sometimes, they don't like the tool. So it wasn't one of them getting under there because they won't get under that tool. Uh, it was probably a little squirrel. I know we have some, but um, those things happen. But still, I got quite a bit, even with all the critters I have to fight all the time. But yeah, you need to be thinking, this might get kind of cold now without all this was grown clear up here and kind of actually giving protection. This is old echinacea that it just didn't come to fruition. It got cold and froze it. I will cut that back. Echinacea comes back. So that'll be some of the prep work that I haven't got to yet. May get some plastic if I can and lay some around here to protect some of this. I don't think it's going to get that cold anymore. We seem to be in a... The last year it was just hot from May on. This is only January, but um, yeah, there's other things you can be doing too. Now, I don't think I have too many more turnips Here's a little turnip. It didn't get great big, but you can use these leaves, eat them fresh. I dry them often, and um, matter of fact, I just made a chicken soup today and used some dried turnip greens in it. So, um, sorry about all those sirens. I don't know what's going on today. Whew. It's been like that quite a bit today. Um, but yeah, you can be drying some of your greens and make powdered greens. This is a time of year for greens. Uh, and then you'll, you'll have it ready to go in the hot summer when you don't have a lot of greens. You can use it then too in different stir fries and things like that. So I've got this tool on here. It's not real pretty, but it does keep the little birds from eating all my lettuce and kale. Um, don't have any over here, but they don't seem to be bothering this side too much. Um, well, some I see. Anyway, here's a few things about getting your ground prepped and things ready, cutting off tree limbs. But you know, the most important thing that you can be prepping right now with this crazy world that we're living in, especially, but even if it weren't, you still need to be prepping your heart. And you really can't do that without the Lord Jesus in your heart. Um, I would suggest reading Romans 10 if you were interested in coming to know the Lord. Or if you have any questions, email me. I would be glad to talk to you. I don't want to push anything on anybody. I just have to share because that's where my... I, I, I have a great deal of peace and joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength and I just can't help but share it with you. So, but I don't push. Um, anyway, prepping for the garden to get some food and prepping our hearts. Y'all have a, a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. Give me a thumbs up if you will. Subscribe if you haven't. It's it's free. Check your subscribe button. A few of my uh, subscribers said they've been unsubscribed. They've had to resubscribe. Um, click that little bell. All those things when you do it, it tells YouTube that you think my video is worthy of being watched. And so they push it out maybe a little bit more. They're more likely to be pushing the big channels that have thousands of viewers. Us little channels, we're kind of on our own. That's why I like the shout outs and shouting out about all the other little channels around. So I do plan on doing some more shout outs. Um, I try to put my videos out on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. I may put a short out in between or a community page out in between once in a while, but those are the main days that I try to get my videos up. I will leave you with all of this, and we will catch you next time. Bye now.